Hi, uh, welcome to today's video about the neutrino, the ghost particle. This is a nice overview over the standard model. You can see there are two uh, big groups of uh, particles. At the left, uh, it's fermions. At the right, uh, bosons. The fermions have a half odd integer spin, for example, one half, three half. And the bosons have a integer value spin, for example, zero, one, two. One example is the Higgs boson. And there are baryons, uh, these are composite particles. For example, the proton is a combination of two up quarks with uh, two plus two thirds charge each and one down quark. The neutron is a composite particle of uh, one up quark and uh, two down quarks. At the bottom, you can see the group of leptons and the three neutrinos are members of this group. They are there's the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. Uh, neutrinos have a half spin, they are neutral, have no charge, and their name comes from uh, neutron, and the suffix uh, eno comes from the Italian language. The suffix means uh, little, like for example, bambino, or children. That's uh, where this name neutrino comes from. This is a picture of uh, one uh, neutrino event. Uh, the neutrino was detected uh, first by Coven and Rains in 1956. It was actually the anti-neutrino anti that was detected. And you uh, detect these uh, tiny particles uh, by detecting the secondary particles that they make. For example, uh, in this case, um, the anti-neutrino collided with a proton. Then you get a neutron and a positron, and those you can uh, detect. In this picture, you can see another experiment from 1970 that was an um, observation of a neutrino. Again, um, you detect the uh, products of a collision of the neutrino with a proton. This is the path of the proton. And these are the secondary particles, uh, the mu meson and the pi meson. That's how you detect uh, this tiny particle neutrino. These are the three uh, neutrino flavors. At the left, that's the muon neutrino. In the middle, that's electron neutrino. And at the right, the tau neutrino. And one special thing about neutrinos is uh, they can oscillate between these three flavors. And they are known to have a very little interaction with other matter. For example, a neutrino um, is capable of flying right through the middle of the Earth without any interaction, and then it come out, come out at the other side. Um, the mass of the neutrinos is not exactly known. However, the, uh, there's an upper limit. All these three uh, neutrino flavors combined have a mass that's less than one millionth of the electron mass. To give you an idea about the mass of the electron, it's um, 1, 1,836 of a proton mass. This is a picture of anti-neutrino. Um, the difference between in, uh, neutrinos and anti-neutrinos is the helicity. The anti-neutrino has an anti-parallel spin to the momentum, and the neutrino has a parallel spin to the momentum. In this picture, you can see nicely the oscillation of an anti-neutrino. This picture, yellow, that's an uh, electron anti-neutrino. Uh, in green, the muon anti-neutrino and the tau anti-neutrino. Um, there are percentages, fractions, uh, over a distance from a reactor. And you can see um, you have a nice mix of all these three flavors. This is one of the branches of the nuclear reactions in the sun. Uh, that's the proton-proton-2 branch from the hydrogen fusion. It starts at the top left. Uh, you need uh, extreme conditions, high temperature and high pressures, uh, like they exist in the core of the sun, to make this um, reaction happen, to overcome this uh, two protons repelling each other. Uh, they can merge. Uh, one product is a positron, another is the neutrino. Then you get uh, deuterium, which can merge with another proton. Uh, one gamma array is emitted. Then you get this uh, helium-3, which can merge with uh, helium-4. Then you get lithium-7. This lithium-7 can decay and emit another neutrino. Then you get beryllium-7. Beryllium-7 can emerge with another proton. Then you get uh, beryllium-8. This is known to be a very unstable um, nucleus. There's a half-life of just 8 times 10 to the minus 17 seconds. That is called a beryllium barrier. And it's, 
immediately uh, decays to two helium-4 isotopes. And the helium-4 isotopes are known to have a very high bond energy per nucleon. That's why this reaction is exothermic. You gain a lot of energy. That's the energy uh, that comes from the sun. The sun is the neutrino source. And uh, these neutrinos have a very high speed, uh, near the speed of light. That's uh, 300,000 kilometers per second. And it could be that um, neutrinos are a candidate for dark matter, um, of the so-called uh, WIMPs. WIMPs are the weakly interacting mass particles. All neutrinos could be the uh, decay products or annihilation products of WIMPs. However, there's one problem, and uh, that's uh, dark matter exists in clumps. And the uh, neutrino is too fast to make these clumps. And uh, this problem is not solved yet. This is a nice picture of the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory in Antarctica. It was built in 2010. It has strings of digital optical modules under the ice surface. This is a picture of the Ice Cube Digital Optical Modules, also called Taklampa. There are 60 strings of uh, there are strings of 60 modules. They are deployed to depths of one and a half to two and a half kilometers. Ice shield is a nice filter for other particles. These um, optical modules uh, detect, make measurements of the Cherenkov radiation. This is a picture of the Cherenkov effect of the UMass Lowell Research Reactor in America. Uh, this is blue light emitted from a charged particle in a, me in a medium with a speed that is higher than the speed of light in that same medium. And uh, this is light from the secondary particles of the neutrinos. This is a nice uh, stellar map in the middle, in the, uh, the blue dot here, is the sun. These are the 2000 uh, brightest stars around the sun. You can see the higher, uh, higher number of stars in the middle, in this plane. And one result from Ice Cube was that uh, the neutrinos observed from the galactic plane, uh, they are higher concentration. This means uh, the source is in the Milky Way. These are not extragalactic. Uh, neutrinos and the dust and uh, gas in the Milky Way is no, uh, no barrier for neutrinos that can uh, pass right through it. There's another reactor that's the Daya Bay Reactor Neutrino Experiment. It is located near Shenzhen and Hong Kong in China. It took uh, data from the years 2011 to 2020. Its primary goal was measurement of neutrino mixing parameter. This describes the oscillation of the neutrinos between these three flavors. And this reactor is able to produce high energy anti neutrinos. This is a, a beautiful picture of the detectors of the Dana Bay anti um, neutrino det detection. And these are gadolinium doped uh, liquid scintillators. Again, you uh, make use of the fact uh, that you can measure the secondary particles. In this case, these are the photons. And you can use mo uh, multipliers to measure the photons that come from the um, decay uh, of the neutrino. This uh, event in the, from the year 1987, that's the supernova type 2 in the Large Mag Magellanic Cloud, at a distance of 168,000 light years. This animation made of Hubble images. Um, you can see a ring collision in the year 2001 that uh, emitted X rays. And there was a, a burst of neutrinos that arrived at the Earth uh, two to three hours before the light reached the Earth. But that does not mean that the neutrinos traveled uh, with a speed that's um, higher than the speed of light, because the neutrino emission uh, happened prior to the light emission. That's why they came first. Uh, the shock wave in this uh, picture is a speed of 2300 to 3600 kilometers per second. This is another beautiful picture of the same supernova, SN 1987A, another image from Hubble. A supernova type 2 happens uh, is an explosion of a massive star with a mass of 8 to 50 solar masses. And depending on the initial mass of the star, you, the product is either a neutron star or a black hole. And this is what produces the neutrinos, that's the electron capture and from the shell of the um, nuclei. A proton uh, captures an electron, then you get a neutron, and uh, 
byproduct is the electron neutrino. This is a beautiful picture of the, what happened after the Big Bang. 13.8 billion years ago. Yeah, um, what caused the Big Bang is uh, still not uh, really understood. After the Big Bang, there was an inflation period. Then you get this uh, cosmic background radiation. After that, the Dark Ages. And 400 million years after the Big Bang, there were already the first stars and later the galaxies. And there should be not only a cosmic background radiation, which is the afterglow of the Big Bang, but also a cosmic neutrino radiation, because the neutrino separated from normal matter uh, one second after the Big Bang. But this uh, radiation is not uh, detected yet. Uh, these are some uh, interesting stats about neutrinos in the universe. Um, the most common particle in the universe is the photon. There are 4 times 10 to the 84 photons in the universe. Neutrinos are the second most common particle. It's estimated that there are 10 to the 78 to 10 to the 82 neutrinos. But uh, still this um, big number, due to the low mass of the neutrino, the neutrinos can uh, not make more than 1% uh, of the universe. This picture is an interesting picture of the Pepper Ice Cube. And there's a um, nice song of uh, Ice Cube that's, I think, this uh, best song. It uh, was a good day from the year 1992. You can check it out if you're interested. And that was the, today's video about the neutrino, the ghost particle. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.